I hate to break the fishing news after M check, but I'd like to speak about the ice hockey. Congratulations. You're one of the 13 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. We just traded a migraine in for like an orgasm. You might want to mark that down. Yeah. Yep. yep. All of my projects are on schedule until they're not. A member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. About as funny as we're going to get today. Episode 288 of the Real Life Podcast is what you're currently putting into your ear holes. I'm Tyler Uramchuk, Jay, Wanye, Bagged Milk, Chalmers, everyone's here. And uh, today's episode is brought to you by the HGA Group, the next generation of business services. Whatever you need, they can help you take your business to the next level. It's an important group over there at the HGA Group. Um, This podcast is also going to be the official Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul recap podcast no yes did anyone boy, actually oh pay for it or did everyone just stream it illegally no streamed it i did not pay for it i didn't pay for it i didn't even watch it i didn't watch it i had it on for a bit and i was like this is stupid it isn't even a fight yeah that was the same thing i had it on for a little bit and then it was just floyd mayweather doing floyd mayweather things and against a guy who is not a boxer you know what interests me actually is Floyd's what, like five seven? He's yeah, he's tiny. a small dude. And Jake Paul's like six one and a half, six two. They, their reach is almost the exact same. Really? Yeah. So that must be Floyd's superpower. Floyd, Floyd trained his arms longer. Yeah. Have to be. He's a good. Yeah, he's a good box with long arms. Hmm. That makes sense. It's like it's like those basketball players that'll have like Kawhi, right? Like absurdly large hands, even though they're yeah. tall people. Like their hands are like way bigger than any human's hands are supposed to be. Um, or, that is interesting, well, though. Or Logan? It's a, was it Logan Paul or Jake Paul? I don't Logan know. Paul. It was, or Logan, Logan Paul or Logan Paul has T Rex arms. One of the that's two. what I was gonna say. It's the only other thing is that he's just got tiny little baby arms. Yeah. Uh, so they go the distance, which may have been surprising. Um, but the one highlight that stands out to me again, I did not watch the fight, but I saw the, the clips of it after is when Floyd punches him, like gets him clean and then like holds him up and it's become the meme that's come out of the fight, but he's that's like literally not letting meme. him fall. That's that hug meme. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, so what happened there was like, I think it was like round five or something and Floyd hits him with a right and then hits him with a left. And it looks like Logan's out on his feet and he basically like holds him up just long enough for him to go back like for the round to end and get him to his corner. And when you guys are talking about like Floyd's superpower, Floyd is a boxer. The reason, the thing that made him great was the fact that he was the, like the best defensive fighter in the history of boxing. You in an hit him. average match, he, you could not hit him. He took less punches than any other boxer in like the history of boxing. And that was his whole thing, right? He's, he would spend like, you know, and he was still doing it. He did, he did it with Conor McGregor. He did it with Logan Paul. Is that he spends like the first three rounds basically like just seeing how a guy moves and then being on the defense. And then um, when the guy's kind of tired from throwing, him, from throwing more punches than Floyd and not hitting because nobody can hit him, that's when he goes on the offensive. And that's what kind of made him How can he not hit him? Like what happens? Does he turn into a ghost and then rebound? realizes? Basically does. His yeah. Foot, he just basically his, turns into a ghost. His footwork is just next level. Like you, he just dances and he, he has like his, his head moves so fast. Yeah. yeah his head's forth, always he just moving. Dodges shit. I so, saw the stats and I'm going to try to pull them up here while we're talking about it, but it was something crazy. Like Logan Paul basically connected on 12% of total punches thrown or something there was like that. that. There was that like, one barrage where he threw like 30 punches to end a round and not one of them landed. Yeah. Yeah. And he was just swinging from the shoelaces too. There was, yeah. there was, oh, yeah. there was no skill or not. not no, no it, skill, it, it, like, it looked no, very unskilled. I mean. The only thing I like about this fight is that it's power to the internet, right? If you are so big doing God knows what, like the Paul brothers, you too can fight a old ploy made weather in retirement and make tens of millions of dollars. No one can stop you. Well, that's the interesting part was the money on it was uh, Floyd had himself a payday. Yeah. Well, you always, the only way he would have done it. You got 10 million for the fight and 50% of the pay-per-view Logan Paul got 250 K and then 10% of the pay-per-view. So both of those dudes made some bank last night. Who got the 40% of the pay-per-view pay-per-view? I would showtime, guess. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Showtime. Oh, wow. The That's other, a- like there's a couple other interesting angles to this and it's like, you know, 
you gotta, as much as I just dislike Logan Paul and pretty much everything about him. But I don't get what they you know, do. Like, I don't get it. I don't exactly. They, they, they make videos, <laughs> man. They, 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 they but like, become how can you be a YouTuber, but also fit enough to fight Floyd Mayweather? Like, how the hell does that well, work? Because now they're wrestling like, in college. The wrestlers. Oh. oh okay. Yeah, but there was never that avenue, right? And like, you know, there was, you know, guys have sat around for years. How much would you pay? How much would you, you know, how much would you need to take a punch from like Mike Tyson? How much would you yeah. pay to see, you know, to see if, and this guy did it, you know? And it's like, oh yeah, it's impressive, right? Like, so it, that, that part of it's impressive. His brother, on the other hand, you know, he's just, he's a bit of a loser. And Is like, he more famous out, or less famous? Was the guy fighting the well, good one Logan, or the dumber one? Logan, Logan Paul kind of started their family in this direction. Logan Paul, I think was the first one. And Jake kind of has been right. So Logan Paul, I think, ultimately in their family is the more popular one. You know, the Kim Kardashian, bigger, but, if you will. Yeah, but Jake's <laughs> done his own thing. You know, he he he's fought he's fought like two. He's fought an MMA guy now. Um, he's fighting Tyrone Woodley, or if he hasn't already, I don't even know when that fight is. Um, but now, like, I think he made. I think legit these... he made a song with Soldier Boy too. If I'm re- remembering correctly, oh, probably. They put out a legit Maybe. single with him and paid him like a hundred grand to be in the song. The other thing that's interesting though is all the people that have realized that like this is a way like boxing, it's just it's it's weird to watch the progression of boxing. Go from like these sanctioned events where you have to like work your way yeah. up, get a fight, to now any two people on any stream can put put on a boxing match and, and like get paid a lot of money for it. And you see like I I fully think that this one was kind of uh, the the beef, like Connor, Connor or Floyd Mayweather and, and Logan Paul was, you know, kind of a made up thing. You know, they, they really <laughs> sold it well, but but no, but like now, uh, there's guys like Jake Paul fighting other TikTokers, like yeah. a guy named Austin McBrew yes. or something like that. He's gonna yes. fight. And the guy he fought like, and and Bryce Hall's gonna fight this Austin McBroom, and these guys are just YouTube stars, and now they're getting in the ring, and people are paying a ton of money to watch them fight. Like, boxing just fucked up, and not the real money. This- the real money, if it goes this way, Chalmers is gonna be down the road where it's like, who do you want to see get beat up by Mike Tyson? And you're like, oh, like imagine we could see fucking Shifley after you just knocked out that hab get beat up by Mike Tyson. There's like an eighty million dollar GoFundMe. This guy has to fight Mike Tyson to get paid. All That's I can think about is the people. All the all I can think about is the people at celebrity boxing, like the OGs. They must be pissed. They they they. No, but you. But that's the thing. They were always like third rate celebrities. Right now, yeah. in not in our not in our lives, but like Logan Paul is very and, and these TikTokers are very fucking popular to people younger than us. Oh, yeah. Well, it is. They, it's it's they, it's amazing how famous some of these people can be, even if you have no idea who they are. They're making boxing relevant again. Exactly. It's almost better for the game. Yeah. You 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 see like you see entities that are like sports entities that have taken a faction of their business and completely like molded it around TikTokers, like, mm-hmm. and it and it does crazy numbers for them. Like podcasts with TikTokers getting into the beef of like between TikTokers, it's it's fucking wild to see. The TikTok world is very interesting. Oilers Nation is now up to how many followers we got on the old take fourteen point one thousand. So we're coming yeah. for you, Paul brothers. What do you know about no, that, Chalmers? We've what you got know a about uh, <laughs> Oilers Nation's got a pay per view boxing boxing match against illegal curve. Yeah, Waz is gonna <laughs> Waz is gonna fight somebody from illegal curve. Yeah, or <laughs> hard. When, when, when Oilers Nation talk TikTok gets big enough, we'll say a hundred thousand. I will get on there and I will do a six month train to get as tough as I can, and then I'll fight somebody else in this city. Let's fucking Chalmers. Yes. Make- <laughs> Chalmers, we will be yes, Waz, clip that because we will be at a hundred thousand yes. before the end of summer. So let's go. Twenty twenty two. Okay. Maybe Who would you fight? Oh, no, 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 you said oh god, I have no idea. Fight? I'm shooting from the hip here. Stop Who's her. your Edmonton nope. beef with though? Has yeah. to be someone good. Like Yeah, yeah. Who you who you who you I don't with? have I don't want to have any beef. That's the the, the Denny Andrews. Pro- Mike Sobel? Thank you. Think you- you yeah, Mike Sobel. No way. No way. That guy is in too good a shape. I would never. I would never. Um, but that's the thing is like there's 
they, they, there was no beefs before this. You know what I mean? Like, Homer's is coming for you, Gord Stanky. Oh, yeah. no way. I what see how Gord about? looks at Aaron. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, well, murder time. I'm manufacturing beef. You hate Gord Stanky. That's good. It's good. Yeah. I, on the other hand, love him. Had a delicious donut. Who donor. would your beef be? Who are you going to go? Ray Upton? Who else would you go? Who would you go, Spag- <laughs> Spagno? <laughs> Uh, yeah, beat up bag it, I don't know. I, I think you know what? I'll just take one inside. I'll just do it internally, and I'm going to fight Gregor. That's oh cool. wow, yeah. he's pretty uh, fit. I know. How about that's how all about, I'll have to get. I'll have to beef up because Gregor is fit. He works out. I know it. So I will get up. into a Greco Roman wrestling match with Robin Brownlee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one punch, David Staples, and he doesn't even know he's fighting. <laughs> He's your just M-check, walking who, down the street. Your M check, who are you beefing with? Wanye. I think we use this to settle the beef on this podcast. Oh, you remember how I paid you that money? It just took me 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> what a good use of money it was, huh? You can't fight me, your M check. I'll bite you. Yeah, you, you fight dirty. I'm going to be very honest. I don't think I have it in me to have the kind of beef that these guys have and go out and sell it and like actually. You know, I couldn't. it's no beef. They, it's all manufactured, know. man. You heard, you heard. Yes, the... I understand that. But, but, but it does, it doesn't change the fact that when that's all said and done and two guys step in the ring and that bell, that bell goes, somebody has the opportunity to get pretty fucking embarrassed. And like, True. you, you hear about you, we've talked to fighters on this, on this podcast, hockey fighters, you know, MMA guys, they all say the same shit. It's like the one thing that motivates them is not getting embarrassed. And it like scares them before fights. Like I've heard guys like just Jorge Masvidal in the UFC say like, and George St. Pierre said his biggest thing ever was that when he went to the ring, he knew he had done the preparation. And the only thing that he had in the back of his mind was, I don't want to get embarrassed. and I don't want to embarrass my family. You know what I mean? And that's, that's a lot. To deal See, that'd be me. Thing. Could you imagine me talking trash to Gregor and he just one punches me in the center of the, of the ring? I'd never, <laughs> right. I'd never be able to live it down. That's tough to come back from. Yep. Your M truck, you fight Steve Dangle and I'll beat up Eklund. I might be able to. No, nah, I probably couldn't dig Dangle. Yeah, he's Eklund's all, all old, Leafs wearing a fedora and shit. He's got I that Leafs rage. I got some, I got oh, some yeah. Edmonton media beefs I would step into the ring with, but we don't need to get Ooh. into that. Oh, oh, come on. Name names. I'm just, I'm just, oh, name names. Names. I'm just fucking with is you. It, is it Lieutenant Eric? No, I love <laughs> Lieutenant Eric. I have no beefs. I've never had a beef in my life. Could we get Reed Wilkins to fight low type? <laughs> I, I don't uh, think that's a fight anybody wants to see go down. What about Louis DeBrusque against Bob Stoffer? <laughs> yeah. I'd pay, I'd pay to see that one. I'd watch yeah. that. Well, let's start who with Louis. Who would win between it. Louis and Strud's current day? Uh, uh, probably. Oh. I, I love Struddy, but probably Louis. Louis still he's just probably so chucks tankish. heavy, heavy bombs. <laughs> Strud, but he never get Strud is still like in his gazelle shape. Like he, I could see him having some a really strong like the reach. Well, the reach and like he, his footwork's probably pretty high. Where, but if Lee, if if Louis tags him with one, it's good night. <laughs> that <laughs> good thing's night, coming Jim in Knight. heavy. Mm-hmm. I like this. But those wasn't those there a fight? Never league? do it because hold on. Was fight. there a fighting league at some point? I'm just remembering. And like all it was, was, yeah, Quebec, the Quebec one. And then like yeah. a guy broke his skate, and then no pay per view was seen or something. Oh no, there, there, oh, there was, there was that one, like gladiators on ice or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And it was they had to do it in Prince George, British Columbia, because that's the only place yes. where they, get, they had to get sanctioned. Yes, uh, and it was a pay per view. Yeah, and it was a bunch of. We watched it. Yeah, it was so. It wasn't like, that bad. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, it was kind of. It was low budget. Yeah, it was okay. I, I thought you meant the. Uh, broke. I thought you meant the league nard in the, in Quebec. No, that that, those guys, those guys chuck them. Yeah, that, that that league still goes on. I was listening to to John Scott's uh, that John Scott episode with Ken Reed. Ken Reed is fucking hilarious. We got to get him on the show here, I'm Chuck. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's got some books and shit too. Yeah, to yeah. fight him. You have to fight uh, him though. But John Scott saying after he retired, that league reached out to his agent to, to come and play. Was he I like, really, bitch, I'm an all-star. No dice. I'm not joining your fighting league. 
my friend, my buddy, he was a, he was a scrapper in, uh, in junior B or uh, junior, I should sorry in the AJ or in the SJ. And he got invited to go play in that Quebec league. He's just like, listen, I'm not going to go anywhere with this. I don't want to rattle my brain around just for no reason. I think Brashear went there in the lockout year. Yeah. Brashear, there was a big piece in the athletic about all the shit Brashear kind of one, everything he went through and two kind of like the weird little areas he, he went around in to, to continue his hockey career. And I think that was yeah. one of them. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, I'm going to, we want to know if you want to fight. We're yeah. not transitioning until you tell us some beef names. I told you my only beef is the beef on this podcast with Wanya. <laughs> well, you can fight me if you want. I'm not scared of you. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> frightened of most people. So I, I, I Perfect. now even more. So Don't I'm worry, scared I'll, I'll to eat up. sushi. I'm definitely not going to step into the <laughs> ring with someone. <laughs> scared to yeah, eat sushi. Like, I spend I most of my also. life avoiding being punched in the face. Yeah. So I'm with you, Tyler. That's why I'm going to wrestle Brownlee. I'll probably get like Smart. submitted yeah, yeah. very quickly. Can he have Jiu-Jitsu a lit cigar with while he fights you? What's that? I feel like that would be to his advantage if he could smoke while he fought you. Oh, he's well, that's, that's like 1980s Brownlee or 90s. No, no, he's Brownlee. running cigars still, isn't he? No, no, I, I, I would have a stogie wrestling match with Rob Brownlee. Yeah. I'll also what the fuck is that? You both what? wrestle with a lit cigar and if it doesn't go out, you get a bonus point. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yep. Do you even know fighting at all? You're sure? yeah. No, I I clearly don't. Um, there is cigar isn't, wrestled. Uh, <laughs> isn't there someone in the UFC who's from Bonneville right now? Like what? a super what? local product, Dozer or whatever. Right? Yeah, that yeah. Guy, didn't he just fight? Yeah, Dozer. Dozer. Yeah. For reals? How's he do? Is he good? Um, I, about I, think, the UFC. I think he's pretty good. Um, Bonneville, like he gets a lot of fights. I think. Um, Tanner Bozer, yeah. Reason- for some reason, uh, an old, old, old UFC kind of like highlight pack came across my YouTube, you would like kind of thing. And I forgot that back in the day, way back in the day, it was just like a free for all of guys just swinging at each other. And they were not like the tanks you see in there now, you know? I want to share the no, background dude. story of this Tanner Bozer guy. So this is just his Wikipedia. Bozer was born and raised in Bonneville, Alberta by a gym owning mother and oil field worker father. So that mm-hmm. already seems like the recipe to get your kid into MMA right there. Uh, Tanner was homeschooled until high school Uh-oh. and has a, has a brother who's also a pro- professional fighter. And he trained karate for almost a decade growing up, reaching a black belt in karate. Yeah. And then Yikes. he was driving trucks to local oil fields and then flipped into MMA. And there you yeah, go. Just his, just his bio has me scared. I'm scared of him. Yeah. Let's yeah. just fight each other. Your end check. Let's not fight that guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He started well, his career media, with anyway. six straight wins. Well, do you like think all, do you think all of us on this podcast could take on the bulldozer? Are we allowed well, drops fights. or is it just bare hands? Oh no. Bare hands. Oh, we're, to fight another we're not day, just them. like the oh, greasers man. and the socials. <laughs> Those no, guys, like the only way we you, I used to oh, tell you guys about a story about when I worked at a place called Noble Homes and I worked there with like two of my really good friends and Jeremy Oblonsky was working there with us and we would oh, yeah. sit with him at lunchtime and just hang out and every so often we would just be like let's go let's go and then he'd stand up and we'd all just like rush him and he the three of us couldn't even get close to him, man. And, and that's like, <laughs> sometimes, we'd go, sometimes we'd go two at once and he just would like swat us away. And we just would like, we, we only could handle that smoke for like a good 20 seconds. And then we just give Somebody up. drives by we're looking at their noble home work site. All their trades are fighting each other. Uh, we were, yeah, no, no, no. It was, uh, noble homes was a mobile. It was like a plant that built uh, modulars. So it was, we would do it in the truss yard back, back out back behind all the trusses. <laughs> behind the trusses. <laughs> so, hey, Jeremy, yeah, put man, down your do turkey sandwich, you piece of shit, and fight for yeah, it. Yeah, beating. It was like legit scary. Like, we would just be like, hey, no punches. And he would just like, he'd basically just take his big mitt, put it on your shoulder, and you'd fly like 10 feet to the right or left, which everyone, he decided. I remember meeting so that guy. Strong. Oh, my God. I met him once at Cowboys, and our buddy introduced us to him, and he shook my hand. And no exaggeration, my hand hurt for the next hour as I went around. I felt like he fused all the bones in my yeah. hand into a super bone. Just thick, strong paws on that guy. And where did he play again? The dub. Yeah, he played for Cooney slash Edmonton. Yeah. And then he played in the ECHL. He played in Russia Idaho, for a time, but he played. And he played he one played for game for St. Louis. The Blues. And Respect. one. And I think he might have played a game with Ottawa. 
I feel like he got, it was an Ottawa system beast mode. Yeah. He's so known think- for, he, he punched out like a Russian gangster in Russia. What? I don't doubt it. Outside of a bar. <laughs> Him and his, I think he was there with his cousin, uh, Marasti, who's also a hockeyfights.com legend, John Marasti. Uh, I, I think he was there too. And they got into like a street fight with like Russian games. They were at a bar. They were at a bar and they went outside. Cause one of the people they were with smoked heaters and they were outside and a Russian wedding was happening at an, a venue next door. And basically Uh-oh. the whole wedding Uh-oh. party, the whole wedding party was outside. There was like six of them. And if you watch the video <laughs> on YouTube, they say something to Marasti. There's a video of this guy, on YouTube. Yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah. It was like and one guy, world news. One guy swings at Marasti and you can just hear the cameraman, and he's like saying, "No, no, no! It's M- Marasti and Yablonski. and they're like saying, "No, like that's those two. Don't fuck around." And they take on the whole bridal wedding party, and they just kick oh, the shit. shit out of these guys. <laughs> oh, I found God. the uh, I found I found the video on YouTube, so that'll be going in the old article when that goes up on the it site. It has almost a hundred thousand views. Listen to the background; it's hilarious, guys. You would think saying, we like, planned this conversation, incidentally. This is entirely by accident. Go on, Sean. No, that's, I mean that's the story. Watch the video. It's now. good. No, it's interesting. Yeah. Keep talking. So I think well, Chalmers I is saying that we wouldn't beat the bulldozer then. Uh, no, <laughs> we wouldn't even have a chance. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, long story short, this is what got us to like, Russia. Best case scenario is we send all four guys to the front side, and while he's dealing with that, one guy jumps on his back gets him in a naked chokehold and rides that Bronco until he goes down. If they can. Oh, and that's that'll a- be a buck and Bronc for sure. <laughs> oh, if you're yeah. that Russian mobster wedding, it's like, look guys, I don't know what you think, you know, in the Russian mob and what you've seen. This is going to go very, very poorly. If you continue down this path. Like in Panarin was there. Really? And Panarin played on the team. Yeah. Panarin was oh, with yeah. him. What the <laughs> fuck? There was that super team where they all that they only brought in tough guys and and, and I guess Panarin Panarin would have been really young. <laughs> he was and, expected to score holy all fuck, the goals. That guy got you, popped. I don't even know who anyone <laughs> is in this video. Well, <laughs> well uh, one of them's John Morasti and one of them's Jeremy geez. Oblonsky. I was watching it for like a minute and I'm like, okay, this is pretty anticlimactic. Just some guys outside of a fucking building. Night, night. There's a lot of Russian yelling and all that shit some guy smoking a cigarette and then bang, someone just gets fucking popped. Holy. I would be very, very intimidated if someone was yelling at me in Russian. Yeah. Really any Uh, foreign language. Yeah. I don't like it. Really any language. Even English would be enough for me to. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Uh, This is a weird spot to transition out of um, because none of this was on the prep sheet. I did not think we were getting into any of this nonsense. There is no prep sheet. No, there's not. Uh, but it is a good time to give some love to our friends at Neo Financial. A better way to spend, save, and get rewarded. Check them out, neofinancial.com. No minimum balance, no monthly or annual fees, and all the perks of an everyday bank account. Shout out to Neo Financial. We're going to have more on them coming up on Thursday's episode as well. There's a little tease for you. Um, speaking of this podcast and staying on the rails, I had a dream about this podcast the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was very, I don't have like very long, intricate dreams. Like some people mm-hmm. remember like every little detail, like it went on for an hour. Right. And that's just not me. I don't have that sort of brain capacity, I guess, but I had a dream that I was sitting right here, um, recording the podcast in my office and we somehow got onto the topic of the NHL draft. And we were discussing like very intricately, like the different sort of prospects and like what each of them are good at. And then I said, all right, we're going to move on from this. And Wanya got super fucking pissed off at me because he wasn't done talking about the prospects. Wanya and that was the dream. Like, that was it. Love the prospects. And now you want to fight Wanya. Yeah. I'm yeah. John Morasti, not you. <laughs> Anyways, I felt the need to share that because I thought it was interesting. Uh, Listen, the other thing. If you're having on. sex dreams about me, you keep that shit to yourself. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, it's too bizarre. I, I want an update because we didn't get to this for a while <laughs> because, <laughs> because the Oilers were in the playoffs and a bunch of exciting shit was going on. But the River Valley Project, what's going on here? What's sort of the latest with everything going on? Umfraville, um, I can't say that. Umfraville block? The Umfraville block, Jay, do you want me to give a little update? Go for it. I'll add in any, fill in any holes if there is any. I doubt there will be. Well, Louise Umfraville of the Umfraville block name was considered the first lady of Edmonton and of Northern Alberta in like 1840. Just FYI there, you Ramchuk. 
So when I get all my facts straight, I'll tell you one day how it all works out, but we've got it all written up. So that's why it's called the Unprevailed Block. It's going good. I think it'll probably be open mid-July, two blocks north of Little Brick down in Riverdale. Now, this is not replacing Little Brick, right? They will both exist. They will both exist. It's a neighborhood now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a bakery in it called Bread and Butter, and then there's a little pub in it we're doing called Dog Patch, which is going to be super sweet. And then our offices are on the second floor, and then the third floor is two Airbnb suites, which will be fly. So when you say our offices, is that like, is Oilers Nation moving there? Yeah, man. So when I come to work in the office, I go here now. New studio too. Yeah, new studio. And what's gone into the new studio? I know nothing. Well, Well, at the moment, it's just walls. Yeah, right now it's a terrible studio. Yeah, exactly. He's on us. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to have, uh, you know, nicer table, nicer walls, and a nicer floor and everything else. So it's not so going to go on the basement. For your computer. It's yeah, it's got an on-air sign. So when we're on the air, we hit a switch and literally a light bulb outside that the words on-air painted on will yep. illuminate. RIP but, sign that got taped to the door that no one paid mm-hmm. attention to. And exactly. No one ever, and I assume no one will pay attention to the light. light I can't imagine either. the light bulb is going to provide much of a shield. No, people that in. thing is just going to be a revolving door of people coming in. I just imagine in. it always staying on because someone always forgets to turn it off. And then people just like, yeah, it's just on. Just that's like always on. Lots of windows, lots of natural light. Good, Chuck. So you can uh, you can feel happy. A lot of you can still order downstairs. downstairs. Desk. Yeah, a lot of vitamin D. Bakery downstairs is gonna be problematic. I'm not gonna lie about it. I am a guy who likes fresh baking. So our baker, she uh, like bread's gonna be a big focus of bread and butter. Shocker. Um, Oh, weird. And, yeah. uh, I finally, our baker has been with us at little bricks since November, just kind of helping us out here with our baking needs here. And, uh, she's, she's now cause they're cause, cause the bakery also fuels the menu to dog patch. So there's going to be like a lot of sandwiches, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff featuring the products of, of the bakery. So she's been like the last like month now been bringing in her breads. Oh, if you're like, if you're a bread person, like, oh, it is going to be good. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be bread problematic. Sandwich. It's, it's dangerous. And then also you, you've got a pub right below your feet. So that is also dangerous. Yeah. That's going to be slightly more dangerous than the there's bread for be, me. Yeah, like, hey, would you like a vodka soda at 8 15 in the morning? Yes. Yeah. That's just so good pandemic work. living though. We've There'll been be training for this. Colorful moment. podcasts. I'm sure. But the exciting thing about the third floor that I, I, I love at one of the claims to fame that we can uh, make is with the bed and breakfast suites on the third floor, we can make the claim that these are the first hotel rooms in the river Valley in over a hundred years. It's true. Oh, wow. Yeah. One of the Airbnbs, your Amtrak is number 99 and one is number 97. Guess whose idea that was. I'm going to assume yours my idea you me Wanye, from your dreams <laughs> and then are you going to make them like fantasy land hotel-esque where every like you sleep on connor mcdavid pillows <laughs> even better it's part of the interactive Wanye experience i yeah. live in one of the airbnbs while people that's, stay there that's yeah. right and i'm like hello. hello good morning hi my tv's broken it's only showing old connor mcdavid highlights no that's not broken at all you're in suite 97 idiot so I'm now that we're in the-, in the shower wearing a bathing suit while they're trying to shower and i'm like i'm wearing a bathing suit so now that we're in the hotel game, I would like to uh, put out an open call to a celebrity boxing match against the Marriott. Wow. Staff cool. on staff. It's, yeah, it's it's going to be like 200 against one, but uh, let's do it. If we're, if, we're, if, we're in, if we're in the game, we got to start beefing. This the building isn't even done yet. 200 hotel maids. Yeah. This building isn't even done yet, your M check. The, no. There's no one staying there. No one's even booked a room. I've already gotten in trouble from our business partner for theoretically hanging out in the Airbnb when I haven't rented. She's like, oh, and by the way, I do not want to hear about you being in the bar downstairs and deciding you get to go upstairs and hang out in the Airbnb. And I was like, that's a really good idea. I should go upstairs and hang out in the Airbnb. <laughs> well, that was doesn't even exist. Just, After that's party. Just easy math. Yeah. Like, oh, the bar shuts at 11. Really? I know an Airbnb that's 12 feet away that won't shut ever to the bar. Wow. That's my thinking. Yeah. She should not have given you that idea. I should have built, been able to build the building in the first place. Somebody at some point should have said, this isn't a good idea. You guys aren't, can't be trusted. <laughs> and yet here we are. Fair enough. It's going to be cool, man. So mid July, hopefully depending on how the world goes. 
I'm excited. Well, I'm excited to can. check it out. If there's a new studio, I want to get my hands in there a little, you know? Well, yeah. Well, if we may even ask for your input, your M truck. Really? Well, that makes me feel like a valued member of the team. You if you'd stop you. dreaming about me, you weirdo. <laughs> yeah, it's it is it is getting weird, but yeah, if, if you can get over that. Jeez. Right. Uh, okay. Um, it's almost Father's Day. Uh, now that we have a handful of dads on this podcast, two to be exact. Um, true. If, you, if you're looking for something for your own father, head to twigandberries.ca where they have a new mug and a keychain and a card that simply say in simple font, father of the goddamn year. Find it at mm. twigandberries.ca. That's the kind of shit my dad would like. I know that. Um, when you click the sort of, uh, when you click that part of their website, it goes on to give you a bunch of other Father's Day ideas. Um, they got some Titleist Twig and Berries golf balls in there. Some nut rub. Who does it? Which dad doesn't want their son to give them nut rub for Father's Day? Wanye Jr. Give me mine, nut rub. But... We're going to have to go have a chat with a psychologist. I'll tell you that. <laughs> your check, what do you think you do if you, get, if you gave your dad nut rub? Just be like, Dad, I want to make sure that your figs are well taken care of. <laughs> if I went the other way and tried to give nut rub to Wanye Sr., him and Wanye Jr. would probably get together and have me committed. <laughs> my dad would not be at all surprised if I bought him a pube trimmer, to be honest. Cool. Oh, fly. <laughs> he wouldn't just fly. Maybe uh, I'll, yeah, buy one dad... for, I'll buy one for Papa Bag Milk. I'll be like, you hey, should man. get one for your dad, your Amtrak. Given the strained yeah. relations you have. Nope. This might break the ice. <laughs> I would say it would not. <laughs> Talking uh, about like, each oh, other's is this junk. A beard trimmer, Tyler? Is this for me to shave my face? And you're like, no, dad. Think lower. He doesn't. He doesn't call him dad. Remember, the card would yeah. read to Bob Sir, from Tyler, yeah. to tenant from son. <laughs> to tenant. Uh, he actually he keeps bugging me. He wants one of those mixed century shirts. So I have to get my hands on one of those before for Father's Day. I don't know if that's possible, but I'm going to try to get it done. Um, all right. So I got the River Valley stuff. We're done there. No other updates. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. asking. Well, Very nice of you. That was unbidden by us. That was on your own. Yeah. Tyler, just think about how, how great it'll be, right? Maybe you'd treat yourself on a Friday for Oilers Nation Radio and you wander down a little brick, get yourself a salted caramel latte, then wander over to Dog Patch, have a beer. By the time you get to Dog Patch, your coffee's already gone, so you're ready for another drink. This, the math works. It, it all does. works. Are I can already I'm, imagine we- a lot of scenarios where I'm like calling my girlfriend on Friday after work, being like, I got too drunk recording Oilers Nation Radio. You have to come pick me up. Happens to the best of us. Yeah. Are we going to go to the schedule that I had proposed? I think it's a good idea, fun- Chalmers. I think it's a good idea. What's your What's your schedule? Oh, I haven't even heard this. What yeah. do you got for us, Chalmers? I think that we should do this twice a week, just like we do, where they come out on either the same day, but we do it at like 10 o'clock at night at the studio. So it's funner and we're more amped. Yeah, because listen. We're going to be we're like, and then it comes out the next day. Plus we have better content. So like if we were to do it on like Thursdays, it could be at like, it comes out on, though. it could be at like earlier. Yeah, it doesn't it have to be, be late. Like night. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the days too could change where like, if we did it on, if we did it on Sunday night at like nine o'clock, eight o'clock, everything from the weekend is done. And people wake up on Monday morning to a podcast about all the things that happened in our world over the weekend. Then we do it on, on like a Thursday night, which comes out Friday, and that can recap the whole week. And you get like Monday or Thursday night football in there and hockey. Let me let me Chalmers mid pitch. Let me let me throw a mid pitch pitch into Chalmers's pitch. Chalmers explained it to me as right now we're meeting in the middle of the day. We're all thinking about work. You want me at my best? You get me after three Ryan Cokes at eight <laughs> o'clock at night. I'll be ten times more funny. I'm like okay, okay. That feels like a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I get what you're saying, Charles. I do. Like, I get. I'm it. always like, like real life. Sometimes I can just be a zombie because I'm caught in some kind of fire that I've been trying to put out prior to that's still not out, and all I'm thinking about is that problem, uh, and that can affect kind of my state of mind while I'm on the show. So. <laughs> Something that's outside of business hours, I could agree, could produce some more hilarious stuff. But that's it's that's asking a, it's asking a lot. But at the it same is time, asking like, a lot. When, when we when we do this at one o'clock on a Monday, yeah. I wake up on Monday morning, usually to 
a shit storm and I usually have to get the week ready and get everybody getting what, what they need to be doing and all the organization that takes place. And so Monday at one o'clock rolls around and usually I'm just in time. I'm should be doing something else, but I'm having to like now do this. Right. And so I'm just saying like at nighttime and you've had a couple hours to decompress from your day job and your work and you can sit around and it's like, shoot the shit with the boys for an hour at, at, at that night. I mean, everybody, I don't know, just uh, maybe it's just me. Maybe there is. Some no, I'm with you fully. Chalmers. Nighttime. Wanye, like, after hour, after hours, Wanye had a couple drinks. Wanye is really sassy. You'll like him. Just, just like an eight o'clock, eight o'clock on a Monday night is a lot different of a Chalmers than one o'clock on a Monday afternoon. Mm. I'm completely, I'm, 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 I do my best to try to like, look back at like the things that we want to talk to, but like talk about, but it's hard to do like a bunch of all this research. Like I think, think I'd be more prepared if it was, you know like, what I'm hearing phone. right now, Chalmers, remember the time when two of the members of U2 recorded the theme song to mission impossible. Yep. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing a lot of people <laughs> in U2 right now, with a lot of motherfucking silence. And I hear Larry Mullen <laughs> and Adam, the other one, the one to go and record the mission impossible theme. What I'm seeing is a lot of guys who just want to have nine to fivers. Exactly. I see a lot of Johnny nine to fives on this thing. <laughs> hmm? Johnny lunch buckets. My beef. Hey with guys, let's start a band. Like... Okay. But never on Saturdays. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my beef would be, or my beef with the idea is that, you know, we say we're going to start at what? Nine o'clock, eight o'clock. No, it doesn't have to be 10 o'clock. Tyler's two hours of sleep already. Yeah. yeah. There's that. Also, (laughs) we're going into the studio again, which I'm already, well, I'm excited for because I can see everyone again. We'll say that. Um, But then I got to drive down to the studio again after probably being there early in the day. I'm not exactly close. It's a pain in the ass for me. We're going to wrap up recording, let's say at 930 at night. And then I need to edit it get it ready, get it ready to post. Now, all of a sudden, it's like 10.30 before I'm even done that. And then there's the- Bono and the Edge didn't appear in the Mission Impossible theme. You know, they were- maybe, maybe, So you're going to move the podcast to 10 o'clock and- Maybe I'll do there? another podcast with Chalmers <laughs> called Chalmers and Wanye together hmm. forever. Maybe you do it at five after work. Uh, uh, listen, I see. It, so you want to have it, mid-drunk Chalmers occur at 5 p.m. Like a magical yeah, apparition- that ain't happening. No. The Chalmers I know it needs to be about a Mickey and a half deep, and that takes time. <laughs> that just doesn't happen because you wish it. Anyways, I am excited to get back in the, in, the, in the studio just to see it and see you guys and, like, have better chemistry over around a table. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. My favorite part about when we would record in person is when everyone would just have side conversations with their mics on. That's what yeah. drove me nuts. I was trying to think about that earlier. I was like, what <laughs> drove me nuts about like when we were in the studio? And A, we would sit around and shoot the shit for 25 minutes before recording, and it was better than the episode infinitely. <laughs> Always. <or not> in, <laughs> but like the best conversations happened before we recorded. That pissed me off all the time. And also when we'd be like sitting there talking and like two people would be talking on one side, two people on the other. We talked over each other a lot, which we also do on this, but I guess that's just I think that this show. this show is like a it's like a dog pile in a schoolyard where everyone's fighting for airtime. I think That's if we right. get back in person, it'll be much easier to pick up on normal social cues and not talk. But it like, wasn't. We just yelled all the time. It's like three guys in a lunchroom trying to jump Jeremy Yobolonsky. Oh, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Good luck. Good luck, indeed. All right. I uh, forgot to give the promo code with Twig and Berries. It's Nation15, by the way. It gets you 15% off. It's all part of the real-life package you get where we help you save money on products you need. Like some of the stuff, you can get at manscaped.com. That promo code is real life. It gets you 20% off free shipping, whether you just need some creams and rubs to really tidy up down there, or you need a new razor like the lawnmower 4.0 wireless charging safety switch, all that good stuff. New, new additions, the lawnmower 4.0. I love the 3.0. So I can already imagine how, uh, how you would all find the lawnmower 4.0 promo code, real life manscaped.com. All right. So we are, we did not agree on a new recording time, even though I was that I didn't know that was an issue. Um, I understand where you're coming from though, Chalmers. That time we did the Christmas episode and we were drunk and we recorded for like an hour and a half or whatever. That was fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It might get old, you know, doing that twice a week. It'd that might become a, a, yeah, a little bit much, but Hey, that's the, the best thing about it is 
we do have the freedom. Like with this, we have the freedom. I can do it in my truck, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been really easy. I was, I was very like skeptical about going to two times a week because I just knew coming down to the studio. But when we started doing it from my truck, like I can do this pretty much anywhere. Right. And that is a huge benefit. Yeah. We so, never did two times a week in studio. Hey, this was a pandemic driven thing. So yeah, that's yeah, something yeah. to probably think about as well. I don't know if maybe, the people, maybe I don't it's know like the people would special, want us to go. Yeah. Special events. Maybe it's only like a nation network special event occurring at night. Chalmers half in the bag. Yeah. So if, something. so what you're suggesting, having to come down to the studio makes it an issue. If it's done like this, then you could do a once a week episode that's later in the, like that's in the evening. Yeah. Because this is easy enough to just roll into this room, record it. Don't have to drive for like an hour well, total hour, 10 total. Well, and now trip. that me and JR live close together, we can share an Uber. Yeah, but can- <laughs> Chalmers is trying to basically merge <laughs> a night is, out. No, no, Chalmers, no. Yeah, Chalmers He's trying merging to a through. night out with yeah. 2,300 listeners of his night out per That's average listenership. Doing. He's like, I want to be drunk but I want like three never, sections of Rogers listening to me on average. I've never met a guy that shows up at the pint and watches me go on a little rant around a table that didn't like it. I this I think it's better content, quite honestly. What that if, Chalmers <laughs> is my favorite Chalmers. What he's if not so did, drunk, he's belligerent, but he's drunk enough, he hates you. What if we did <laughs> one episode a week normally where it's just, you know, us in the studio, middle of the day, like we always do. But then we added like, instead of two episodes a week, we do one like special edition episode, which is like the last Sunday of every month where we like record then. And we all know that like the last Sunday of every month, we black off that night. We find a way yeah, to get to we there. Watch, we have a couple of drinks like that. That like I could get on board mon- with like, yeah. We watch the Monday nighter and then we record immediately after. I can mess with that. Or the Sunday night or Sunday night. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Like yeah, Bummer's Sunday Sunday secret agenda of trying to turn this into a football watch podcast. football with. Yeah. <laughs> and then that, like, that is a problem. Like then the podcast would just turn into us being like, wow, that third quarter, here's where the game changed. And hey, where'd Wanye go? Game. There's just a Wanye sized hole in the wall that he ran through cartoonishly. Because right, we're talking about football. I think, I think you know better than to think that we would just stick to one subject, which was the football game. We just watched. Especially after if we're couple, this hard to awesome. manage stone sober, imagine with a few wobblies in us, please. <laughs> no, I'd be way more carefree. You guys remember me in Vegas. I didn't have a care might, in the world. We might also have to have a lawyer or a PR representative sitting in on the podcast. I was worried that about night. that too. I was like the editing of that, like in a normal episode, I feel like people maybe don't realize how much I chop out on like an episode to episode basis, but four or uh, five it, hours it, of content usually. Yeah. These usually take us six hours to record. Um, but like, yeah, if we were a little drunk, cause I remember that Christmas episode, I had to clean out, clean up a bit of it. Um, not appropriate. You. Well, uh, I'm not here to censor anyone. I'm just here to make sure we don't get sued. Like that time, Thank someone God. on this podcast said, James Neal has illegitimate children. Like you can't have well. that stuff floating around in the public from us allegedly has children <laughs> you brought it up again what are you gonna do record this and chop it all up too <laughs> probably probably i forgot about that Jay he's Neal. our last he's our last lifeline you know what i forgot about the other day jay completely do you remember when i got a hole in one at the pitch and putt oh yeah i forgot about it entirely because my little oh. nephew was gonna go to the pitch and putt and his my sister his aunt or his mom rather was like, oh, Uncle Wanye has a hole in one. And I'm like, no, I don't. And she's like, yeah, you got one in Kinsman. Remember? And Jay didn't believe it was real. And neither did Josh. We're like, oh my God, I do have a hole in one in a pitch of puff. I've actually so, been meaning to start going here, back Chuck. to like par threes. Cause yeah, I, man, you could- and I need to work on my short game and like just golfing 18. Like my drives are fine. I'm very consistent off the tee. But it, the problem is on par threes, and then my short game is just atrocious. I feel like I'd really benefit from some rounds. Don't get a hole in one at one with Jay. He won't let you count it. You'll forget about it. Your own highlight of your own life. <laughs> I went golfing with my wife yesterday, and I think we all know my woes with a hole in one. And she hit a five wood on a two on a hundred and thirty yard par three yesterday, and rolled it right past the cup. Oh, I saw my marriage boy. flash before my eyes, boys. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I uh, I missed one. I was at I was out at Sandpiper on Saturday, and I missed one by like it was going probably too fast. It would have just hit the flag stick and came back out, or hit the foam and came back out. But I missed it by maybe a foot. Like I was close. I was excited. Like as soon as I hit it, I was like, "Oh fuck, that's online!" And then it didn't go in. Anyways, Chalmers, would you get a divorce if your wife got a hole in one before you? 
I don't know. I don't know. I know you think about it. I can hear it. Wow. Well, he's telling us the truth. <laughs> on the one I hand, lovely correct. family, two kids. On the other hand, she got a whole <laughs> one before him. It's a hard decision. If the longer that she goes and I, that her and I go golfing and she continues to practice and get better, the less likely it is. But right now she's still in that, like, I've played 20 rounds in my whole life. And that would be a tough pill to swallow for the rest of my life. <laughs> 20 Especially rounds. Especially if she probably, gloats. Oh, I would. I would like, tell her to. And I'll do it on her of behalf. Of course she would. Of course she would. I never would. This is clearly a joke. But I used to play 20 rounds. Yeah, we used to play 20 rounds of golf in two weeks back in the day. And, like, you put that into a 25 to 30 years of golfing and then have your wife just take up the game and get one after 20 rounds <laughs> would be – Nightmarish would yep. be uh, an easy way to put it. Well, if you ever want to go down to Kinzen with a big swing and you know what, and you have him coach you, what up? Okay, listen don't, to me. You don't go right at night. Now, talking about golf and stuff, we are in early June, mm-hmm. meaning that in a typical Edmontonian summer, we've got about two and a half, th- three months left of good weather to do stuff outside. And I have heard diddly fucking squat about our disc golf when are we doing it <laughs> oh when are we going Palmer, you know what i'm so happy you brought that up united actually reached out to me the other day um checking in on that and now that we've got some we've got a path in terms of restrictions being removed yeah. and vaccinations shooting up there is now a real potential for this to happen so i would probably want to err on the side of caution and it'd be something we'd probably do a little bit later in the summer until we really see like really strong vaccination rates and really low uh, case counts and whatnot. Cause we, you know, we have to be pretty aware here about what, uh, you know, doing an event is. Um, so, but like, but like just, just us five going and playing, like, that's all I mean. Like right now, JR, you and I, and the other guys could go golfing. The restrictions are such that, we could play with each other, social distance the whole time, and play a round of golf at any golf course in Edmonton. So yep. are you telling me that that is not something that we can do at a public disc golf course such as Rendell Park? What you're suggesting we can totally do. I thought you were talking about a tournament. I love a tournament, but shit, let's just go, let's just go fucking bang some chains here. Just five, five of us, us and get uh, Josh Park out there to film it. Just get yeah, he, play to play too. he has to play. He's a big frolfer. Okay, so let's, let's, let's do this. Next weekend is, uh, let's do this. Let's do the fuck. Let's do next Sunday. Uh, Maybe the Sunday, the Sunday or the Saturday after the Father's Day weekend, which would be the third week, the last weekend in June. I might. Anybody be gone. got any fucking issues with that? You're what? I might be gone. So I don't know. I'm iffy on that weekend. It might let's have to do be it Thursday then. It doesn't even have to be a weekend. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's try to pl- let's try to do it here. I'm with it, Chalmers. It'll be fun. Let's just go do it, the five of us. I think it would be fucking awesome, you guys. Yep. I've never played nope. before. I've never actually thrown a fi- frisbee neither. in That's my life, so part. this would be interesting. Me I'm neither. I'm going to bring an Aerobee. I'm going right. to cheat bring an Aerobee. They go too far. I don't even know what that means. You don't want to bring your blood. Are those the ones? Chalmers. Are those like the super thin things that yeah, go like you forever? Can, yeah. uh, you can throw them forever. So a fun fact about Aerobees is that there's a company – that makes Aerobees and they make one other product. So they make this flying device, this flying disc and their second product that they make is called the AeroPress, which is a, like essentially a French press for coffee. Okay. Using Aerobee technology. What? That's They're a fun geniuses. fact. Both products are unbelievable quality. Yes. It's like the best press going and that's the best flying disc going. I, uh, <laughs> Sometimes I think about like, you know, this podcast goes up on OilersNation.com. The, the podcast is on the main part of the website. And I always think in an episode like this, if someone clicks it and is like, oh, real, this looks like fun. I'm going to give a listen to these Oilers Nation guys. Ooh. And then they're sitting here listening. Like if this was mm. your first time listening, reach out to me, please. I'd love to. Tyler at OilersNation.com. You're at the 50 minute mark and you have not heard like one lick of hockey. Talk well, yet. there is that. Well, let's like, talk what's about your hockey. thought process? Well, but like, would I'll they say, just be I'll, sitting I'll there say, being like, I don't know. I'll whatever. say one thing nice about the Oilers. I consider it the best uniform in sports. Huh, that's nice. 
It's good. Yeah. It's true. The white one. The white one. Okay. Um, I think it's I mean, one of the better all, logos what, what else, in sports. Yeah. What else is there to say about the Oilers right now? We are the Oilers Nation guys on the podcast. Yeah. That's something. Yeah. Two of we you should. created it. Yeah. Well, I, I I heard you guys had a pretty heated episode on Friday of Owen Radio. We yelled at each other so much. What were the what were the hot button topics? Should they get Seth Jones? Should they not get Seth Jones? Is Dougie Hamilton going to sign here? Should he sign should here? The, Will they- should the Oilers upgrade their defense or is it fine? Should they add an analytics department or should they not? You name it, we yelled at each other about it. But also, like, we, so there's four of us on the pod. It's Dan, myself, Bagged Milk, and Rick. And the combinations of, like, it was me and Rick fighting Dan and Bagged Milk, and then it was Bagged Milk and me fighting Rick, and then it was Dan fighting just me, like – Everyone fought everyone at one point, and it was an insane episode. I loved it. Good stuff. Oh, those are the best. And we went for like 90 minutes. So should we get Seth Jones? No. No. What would it take? I think I think you I think you'd be I think you'd be fooling yourself not to make a pitch for him. Make a pitch, but we have the one thing that no other team has, and that's his bro. But one, his bro might not be here next season, so there's that. Well, but he would he would be as part of the Seth Jones pitch. I also I, thought they should try to sign Dougie Hamilton. They didn't like that idea. I would sign Hamilton before I went for Seth Jones easily every day of the week. Who's, Wouldn't think twice. Who's who's older? Hamilton. I'd go Seth Jones. Can't be by that much though. But he's but he's not as good. And he's gonna cost you money to acquire and then money to re-sign. Hamilton just cost you money. And he's better. Hey, Wanye, Wanye, after after listening to what they were just talking about, is it a good or a bad thing that we don't talk about the Oilers in June? Because that was boring. This cool. is no. All right, no. We'll speculation. Wrap up speculation <laughs> is what is 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 what drove growth for Oilers Nation every summer. It's a very important I like that, topic. But I, but hey, if you haven't noticed yet, my stick is to rip on it. Rip on people who. Throw out trades and who are we going to get? It's June. It's almost June. like people are fans of the hockey team, John. Almost, almost. It's almost well, like got... people need to get a, take a break. Take no, no, no. This is, but this is, this I is the chance you... to rebuild. We realize we're, we're, we're... that the website that uh, this gets posted on is employs Chris us Chalmers, all. Chris Chalmers <laughs> says, stop reading Oilers Nation for a while. <laughs> That's definitely not what I said. What I said was, if you get <laughs> <laughs> Some may say that is how that come across. No, it does not. What it means is, if it's so important to you that you want to sit around with four people at your house at a barbecue and talk about what needs to happen to the Oilers, do it. Sounds good. You're just going to get kicked out of my goddamn barbecue. That's all I'm saying. Wow. <laughs> I've never been invited to a barbecue, so I, I'm not well, missing anything. I don't I know what I'm live. talking about next barbecue. Jeez. <laughs> Me. Wow, that's yeah. the dynamic of this Look podcast. Your Ramtrek doesn't want to be here. Chalmers doesn't want to talk about half of it. I've, I, uh, I Dougie Hamilton about, over I've, Seth Jones, eh? He's better, and he'll cost you. Less. He won't cost you assets. It just makes well, sense. What, what would he cost say. you? Yeah. What do you have to sign him for? Probably eight mil a season. Oh, like two, like oh. eight, like stuff. Yeah, like like eight. Yeah, like eight. Probably something like that. Probably a couple years too. You can't, probably not just one. So, yeah, there's that. Eight you know. million. That's a lot, man. I'm not, and I know one Seth Jones would be that much. One guy's amazing with the puck, and the other guy's, you know, okay with it. So there's that, too, right? Got to work hey, on the breakout. Hey, Charles, what do you think of Julio Jones? Oh, now you're speaking my language. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, oh, now you want to speculate about a sport that won't start for two fucking okay. months. So here's what I think about Julio Jones. I think that they... Boring! And it's, <laughs> it's, and it's red zone, right? You get, it's a red zone thing. If we get if we get the same Julio Jones we got three years ago, they got the best two receivers yeah. on the same team in the mm-hmm. game. Yeah. Their quarterback is the worst in that division, but they have potential. Best running back in the game. I think it's great. I wish he would have gone to the Packers mm-hmm. so that, so Rogers could have stayed there because I am going to see the Packers and the Cardinals this winter, boys. So, A lot of you questions. Wanna, yeah. Okay. What team are you talking about? You guys want to talk about ticks? Well done. Wait, go back to that uh, Mr. Jones fella, whatever it was, Dr. Jones. Who is that? Yes. He used to play for the Atlanta Falcons. At one point in the in, in the in his career, he was the best wide receiver. Oh, and now football. he went to your beloved Cardinals. No, he did not. He actually he oh. went to the Tennessee Titans. And ah. uh, he's on he's on the downswing. You know, it's like 
They couldn't win one with him when he was in his prime. So now he's kind of like on the downside of his career and he is demanding to go somewhere where he can win. And so this is that move for him, you know? So is he under contract? Is he under contract right now? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing in football how little it costs to move big names. Because it's all cap space, right? Like Atlanta didn't want to pay him a cent if he was going to be playing elsewhere and no team can afford him pretty much or wants to to bury themselves in that cap space. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that was kind of, yeah. that was kind Anyways, of boring. Great shot. Did great you see that one guy who took that home run ball off his coconut? That's <laughs> pretty funny. Yeah, that was good. Jose Canseco? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Some old boy was in the crowd and took it right off the bean. Oh, oh really? He's okay. I saw okay. Mark Andre Fleury threw a puck and it hit some old guy in the bean. <laughs> Sorry, oh, that's no. what it was. It wasn't a home run. I started watching home runs off the head on YouTube after. It was originally a puck. You're right. Mm. Did you guys see the, the kid from some high school team or something or college team? I don't even know what kind of team was it, but he celebrated a home run by getting to home plate and somebody from the crowd threw him a Bud Light. He no. cracked it. He, 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 he <laughs> punctured it on his spike oh. and then cracked it and chugged it basically right in the batter's box. Was it a, was it a walk-off home run or was it still like the game was know. still going? I don't wow. know, man. I don't know he stole three bases. It, but- Oh, that's amazing. I don't know, but it was he, awesome. He hit a single, stole three bases in a row, and fun fact, the bat was actually his massive dick. <laughs> Speaking of bats, I heard those. Did you see the beer bats from the Riverhawks? Oh, sick. yeah. Love I it. want one. I need one. What is it? Just a, It's like one of those giant mug or whatever you call them in Vegas, just the giant drinks. But it's a hollowed-out baseball bat that's filled with beer, yeah. Yeah. Sounds like my. I really miss. I really miss last summer not being able to go to the ballpark and just sit in the nation box and get some sun and drink beers in the sun. Yeah. Do you miss okay, it this summer that. too? There's my question. I saw that, but where is that team playing out of? Next year. Uh, yeah, next year they're playing out of the River Valley Field. Okay, uh, so we don't have. Yeah. So there's no baseball. There's no prospects. There's no baseball being played out of that stadium this year. No. Down the River Valley this year. No. That's a bummer. Next year, but they the might Riverhawks be. It sounds going. like they might be opening the bar uh, down there, so you might be able to get yourself a a, a beer bat and I just go hang out, like sit at the field. Yeah, just run the bases. Riverhawks, you if you're listening, my my beer league slow pitch team will play our home games there, and people will watch. They won't, um, but you can rent it out absolutely, Charles. I actually be believe that if it was if it was the right sequence of events, I would watch two senior slow pitch teams play in that stadium. <laughs> and, but I want like, someone who I, I can would do bet that too. on. I, like, I yeah, need I'd to bet, bet on it, it to get my interest. Yeah, so like Charles, if you were to go, yeah, I'd do that. And we'd each bet yeah. 20 bucks on a team and just be into it. Exactly. Here's the funny thing about like when you get basketball, baseball, hockey, or football played at like a much lower level. Like let's mm-hmm. say these were all senior rec leagues. Baseball is the only one where even if it's bad, it's still pretty good because like b- basketball, if a guy can't shoot and they can't pass, the ball's just going out of bounds. It's no fun. If it's in hockey, it just looks like a bunch of people slapping at a puck. It's not that much fun. Football again, slow, but baseball, as long as you got some guys who can get the ball over the plate and some guys who can hit fielding errors are hilarious. Number one, yeah. <laughs> watching, watching people try to like dive at balls and take it pretty serious. It, it, it's by far the best sport to watch with lesser talented players. Cause then, you can, ex- you, then you can put some bets down. Like if say somebody skies a pop, you'd be like five bucks as he doesn't catch it. That kind of thing. I'm all yeah. over that. Yeah. 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 We were it'd be at- an interesting experiment Chalmers to do. A, it doesn't matter. Baseball game where it's literally a two base, like senior teams playing, yeah. but beers, $2. It's like, who's playing. It doesn't matter. Who's going to win. It doesn't matter. It's exactly. at the stadium and beers are two bucks. Exactly. And that's the thing is like, you, you, if you've ever played like where you just, all your, your friends and their wives, they all go to like the Climont Diamond or like the ones in Collingwood. If you were to get all your friends and their wives together and play hockey, basketball, or football, it would not be fun. It would not be competitive. But you play baseball. Yeah. Slow those pitch. things can get, uh, yeah, they can yeah. get like very interesting and very yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. 
I'd be oh yeah, that. I've had I've had rec league slow pitch games get heated. Like it'll it'll. Oh happen. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we, we've Once, had some we've had some uh, some real rivalries. Um, there's a rule in the league where if someone's batting you as a fielder, you have to start behind the baseline, right? Like you can't run in early. So the reason in a co-ed league is so that like if someone is up to bat who isn't a great hitter, you can't just like have all your infielders stand by the pitcher and like knock it down, right? Um, and one yeah. time I called the guy out for doing that. I'm like, you can't fucking do that. And it was his dad wearing zip off cargo j- shorts and, oh, he, yeah. and he lost it on me and started calling me like Ronnie rule book and shit. And then I went, <laughs> and, I went and I popped a home run and like, oh. you know, sometimes you don't run the bases in slow pitch. Oh, he was playing third base and you better fucking believe I rounded those bases on that guy. It was great. It was great. I, I, I love that. That's the best. Like slow pitch is so much fun for that. I thought that rule was more inclined so that, you couldn't stand on the base path and like have a collision or like with, with somebody running the base. I'm sure that's part of it too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but in this instance, it was definitely not because of that. Uh, all right. (laughs) We're going to wrap this episode up. We went to a lot of places that were not Oilers related, but that's okay for all the longtime listeners. I know that's what you like. You like the nonsense and we delivered on the nonsense department today. Oh my God. What you're describing is the show. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's good. I was like, hey, good nonsense today, everyone. Keep it up. I see. Yeah. All right. Uh, sponsored by the HGA Group. This has been episode 288 of the Real Life Podcast for Chalmers, Wanya J, and Bag Milk. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you on Thursday. Great job on making it through the entire hour of the Real Life Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from.